Welcome, Ariana Pichali. We are today here for uh, the occasion of um, the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. I believe it's the sixth edition since that the United Nations has established this day um, in December 2015. So the first one was 2016. Uh, we should be in the, the, the sixth year that this is happening. Um, so February 11th has been chosen to be the day for women and girls in science to promote uh, full and equal access to and participation in science and technology for women and girls. Um, before we jump into the why and how of this special day, I would like to introduce uh, Ariana Pichali, who will be speaking about this topic today, um, because she is the Benelux Diversity Officer of Europlanet Society. She's also um, a, a scientist at uh, BIASB, working in planetary aeronomy on missions to Mars, Venus, and, and such the like. Um, she's been uh, around quite a bit. She's been in Germany for her PhD and in the Netherlands and Paris. And today she's been for four years at, um, at BIRA here in Brussels, Belgium. So welcome, Ariana. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Lucy. Hi, everyone. <laughs> nice to be here. Here, indeed, in the virtual session. In the of virtual Chrome. session, yes. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. So tell us maybe a little bit about why Women and Girls in Science is an important day to, to, to celebrate or, or to, to pay attention to every year. Um, both for the United Nations and maybe for you personally as well. What what do you think? Well, what uh, what was the main objective of uh, the United Nations is that today we have less than thirty percent of women researchers in uh, in the STEM, so science, technology, engineer, mathematics. And uh, of course, this is uh, an overage, it changed from one country to another. And also this overage is changing uh, with time over the career. So uh, right now we have quite a lot of student, of, uh, girl student in, uh, in STEM disciplines, but this, uh, with the career steps, these are going to, to decrease. And this is a problem for the whole society because uh, we should really aim to have a diverse uh, society as much as possible because to work in a diverse uh, environment it's very important uh, for for the whole society it helps to to, to have better creativity to have uh, innovation so we really aim to have an inclusive uh, society in general um and and do you think that this day um, is going to help uh, to to do this. I don't know if you know of uh, any um, special uh, events that are already occurring on on eleventh of February. Yes, usually there are uh, several events in all countries. So uh, in Belgium, there is Be Wise, that it's the platform for women scientists that is organized activities and events. And uh, I, I know I'm Italian, so I know that in Italy there are several initiatives. So I think at the European level and not only, there are a lot of uh, special events on, on this specific day. And it's really to promote women in science. Yes, it's it seems to be very important, especially with societal issues that we deal with today. It's important to have anyone who can help, help in, in issues like uh, developing medicines and vaccines for... Yes. For the, the big, big problems we are still experiencing today or with climate change and uh, I think also so many girls are, are missing out on a career in science. Um, there's a lot of research going around the why and how, but we know for a fact that it is there. You have done some research on, on how the COVID epidemic has impacted the, the life of women researchers who, who try to combine career and family and 
and have had some troubles these days. Can you tell us more about this? Yes, of course. So in uh, a colleague, uh, with some colleagues from Italy, we analyzed the impact of COVID uh, on, uh, on the women astronomy researcher in, uh, in Italy. And uh, the idea was really because Italy was one of the first country to enter in lockdown. And uh, it was quite long from beginning of March up to end of May, June. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the idea was really to see, uh, well, the, the study was born because uh, we were speaking within each other with colleagues. And uh, the idea was really to understand which kind of impact this measure had on, on the life of researcher in general and on women. And so the way to, to understand was to analyze the productivity of researchers. Usually, how do you, uh, can you uh, measure the productivity of a researcher? It is looking at the publication record of, uh, of researcher. And so what was seen is that uh, if we consider the average of uh, the all the year from 2017 to uh, today, uh, the, the average was decreasing in general for all researcher of the production rate. So researchers were publishing less in 2020 compared to the three previous year. But when we divided the, the women and men publication, we, we discovered that men were publishing more. So they were publishing about 10% more than compared to previous years. So the decrease was really due mainly to the decrease in uh, the publication rate of women. Mm -hmm. To understand, to trying to explain this decrease, the only possibility was really to, to think at a different workload at home of all non-paid tasks like taking care of children or yes doing a typical yeah. workload at home mm -hmm. and uh, and this is quite uh, it was quite shocking to see that in 2020 we still have this strong uh, difference because you have to think take, think that during lockdown also for example grandparents could not take care of children so really women all the families had to take care themselves of uh, all these tasks that usually it seems like in a way the the covid situation has enhanced an effect that was already there but smaller and now that the, this this crisis situation is happening, we we clearly see how much more time women are spending on their family and children, even in their research careers. Well, um, when when they are researchers. So, um, but how how do you think that this could be solved? Because I think it's it would be strange to say that oh if we don't know if the women want to spend so much time on on their families or or on or would they rather spend it on research maybe it's a choice that they made consciously um do you maybe have any contact with the 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 research subjects have you asked how how it came to be that they are spending less time on research uh compared to their uh husband or uh, boyfriend I, I think uh, there is a non uh, the the task the workload tasks are not distributed in uh, in an equal way mm -hmm. why is that it's probably for society reason for uh, mm -hmm. it's it complex it comes from society for because women are used to the to gender the, rules the, yeah the gender rules this is difficult to change. Of course, during the COVID, it's an extreme situation, so you you can see more extreme uh, uh, things like that. But in general, we should think uh, about it. I think uh, it's difficult to, to understand what can really be done at the level of policies and probably 
I, I am myself not an expert. Mm -hmm. I think this is just really the first step to see, look, there is a problem. Just to acknowledge it, yes. And then, then there must be policies at level of, in, in our case, at the level of, for example, the European countries that can can help the situation. So mm -hmm. taking, I don't know, helping with career break, because, for example, COVID situation was very difficult for all kinds of reasons. Uh, also, for example, for researchers who, uh, who have not a permanent uh, position for mm -hmm. postdocs, for young researchers that have to look for, uh, for another postdoc and to look for another project. Uh, there were a lot of problem of mental health. So, of course, it is a gender problem, but not mm -hmm. all. So probably yes. in, the, in the future, we have to take in account that these months were really uh, extreme and difficult for everybody from different points of view. Yes, absolutely. Um, but of course, yes, we, we have to, to choose what we pay attention to and, and so we are really trying to focus on one of the many issues today and this should be the, the, the difficulties that women have when they want to have careers, uh, especially in science. It's, it's a good thing to have the research because we need to know what is happening. And unfortunately, it is very difficult to find solutions, but we, we should continue at least on, on trying to to solve what we can solve today and, and see what we can do tomorrow for the next problems. Yes. And um, also, I think this day it's important also for, it's not only women in science, but also girls in science. Yes. And I think it's also important to give visibility to women to be a role model for future scientists and mm -hmm. for girls. Yes. It's something that needs to be taken into account because you s often uh, women scientists are not always present and this is one of the reasons why girls are not pursuing a, mm. a career in science. Yes, it's, I think probably when you don't see many women working in science, not visibly at least, it doesn't even occur as a possibility. Well, maybe another issue I was quite surprised. Well, maybe surprised is a, is a big word. I'm not surprised, but it was something that I didn't know before. Uh, is the gender gap on, on Wikipedia. And so one of the issues, uh, which is a reflection of, of the gender roles and, and, and gender gap in society, is this, uh, is this Wikipedia gender gap? And you are also participating in doing something about this. Yeah, so now, to, to, in, very recently, Wikipedia was uh, doing 20 years of Wikipedia, we had, so it's, yes. it was its an, uh, anniversary. And what was really striking me, I really entered very recently in the world of Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. So less than 10% uh, of editors uh, on Wikipedia are women, women. Uh, mostly are men, white men from uh, the northern countries, moreover. And uh, when we see at the biography of uh, people on Wikipedia, less than uh, 18% today, uh, in uh, September 2020, less than 20%, uh, about 18% of biography are for women biography, all the rest are for, for men. Wow. And, and so there, there was uh, groups uh, starting in 2015-16 decided to, groups of women and men, decided to start to write biographies of women to increase this percentage. And they also trying to understand why women are not writing on Wikipedia, because it's really few, the mm -hmm. number of, uh, of editors. Mm -hmm. and of course, it's women are less, there are writing on Wikipedia, there will be also less biographies on Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. And so one uh, activity on which uh, I'm uh, within uh, the Europlanet Society, it's uh, the planetary wiki edited on. So for the moment, we are doing it only virtually due to the COVID situation. But what we are doing, so an ad, a, a wiki edited on is uh, a meet, meeting, a gathering, when people uh, start 
to write together about a specific topic. And uh, in our case, we are meeting to try to increase the, the diversity of uh, biographies on, on related to planetary science. Mm -hmm. And so we are meeting to write about uh, women in planetary science articles. Okay. Uh, for example, the Europlanet Society includes uh, mostly European researchers, but mostly researchers from uh, the West part of Europe. So, for example, it's also interesting to increase the number of biographies from East countries and really to, to increase and to show that there is a very diverse uh, environment in, uh, in our field. But for this, you, you would need also more participation probably from, from women from these countries who are yes. involved not only in science, but maybe who are simply interested in, in these kinds of stories and can, can write about it on, on Wikipedia. Yes, we are writing biographies and, and it's an interesting way to discover scientists and histories that you, you never knew yes. myself, so yes. Yes, and to, to share it, I, I have to admit that I love Wikipedia and every time that I have a question about something, it's, it's probably one of the first places that I go to to get information, so... I think yes, it's very important to Wikipedia uh, is a starting for... point, yes, for so many people. So making a difference on on Wikipedia, both in content and in editors, would be something that has a larger impact than than we would think. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. Today, a lot of information. If you look for something, the first things which comes out is really Wikipedia. So. Mm -hmm. It really has an impact and it's also important to translate in other language because most of articles are on the English Wikipedia, but, but not everybody can speak English. So, mm -hmm. yes. so we are doing also so translating already existing articles from English to our own native uh, language. Mm -hmm. This can also have an impact on... Uh, Absolutely, to, to make it available to as many people as possible. True. Okay, well, and, and when is this uh, edit-a-thon going to happen? Can other people enter as well? For In our case, it's more related to really to our Europlanet society. Okay. But for example, if you are interested in something similar, you can have a look at the Wiki Women Project, Women in Red, which okay. is, uh, it was born in England. And uh, we, uh, Women in Red, because usually when... Uh, a link is missing on Wikipedia, it, uh, it appears in red. And there is Women in Red, which was really the first one who started the project in England, but uh, then more or less there is in every country. For example, we are in contact with, uh, with Wikidonne, which is in Italy, but there is uh, something in, Fran in France, in, uh, uh, in, there is one in, here in Belgium. Uh, so I really invite you, if you are interested, to have a look at uh, the Wiki Project Women in Red, and from there you can see all the list of countries that are involved. We will we will put some information as well, uh, make it available for for our viewers of this video. Um, well, this this has been very interesting. Um, is there anything else that you would like to add? I think um, maybe we can also quickly mention that uh, uh, you and I are both part of, uh, of an organization, Soapbox Science, um, that, is, uh, that we organize locally in Brussels. It's still uh, a question mark whether it will be able to take place normally as it should in the streets or if we will have to do a virtual session uh, like we did last year. But... Uh, it's also something that, that we do for for the promotion of this image of having women researchers doing science, and hopefully motivate um, more of the of the of the female population of the the ages uh, to choose their studies to to know that it is a possibility if they want to to become a researcher, um, and just to know maybe is there some experience would you like to share something about what difficulties that you have found as a, a woman being a researcher 
in 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 all the years of your career is there something that you would like to share about this uh, i i don't think i never had a strong uh, impact on it it's more something that uh, I started to be interested in with time. So mm -hmm. when I was a student in high school or later, my teacher, my professor never were telling me, oh, you are a girl, you should not do mm -hmm. science. They were always uh, pushing us. And, and so it was never something really clear but uh, with time i started to look around me and to see less and less women in uh, in the room mm -hmm. at conference and this is something that was starting to to strike on me to see that uh, the the far the further you go in career less women you see around you so mm -hmm. I, I, yes it's difficult uh, there are all small things that uh, you start to, you, you are used to, but uh, sometimes you realize that there are some problems, but a really unconscious problem. Yes. Um, yes, it's, it's something that's not quite uh, visible immediately, but mm. when you look further and further into it, you see where all the all the gaps lie and, and, and the, the inequality uh, is lying beneath the surface. It's something which is also difficult to argument for many people who who think that well, society has already evolved. We're being modern today. Women have all the same rights as men, and and there is no issue anymore. Is there something that you would like to say when when people want to put this argument forward? Well, it's difficult to say, but I, I think this is important to have statistics and to have uh, data because we are scientists and even on this topic, we can get our data and we can get the statistics. Mm -hmm. and, and looking at this data, you see that there is indeed a problem. So you cannot say, and yes. uh, in statistics, you should uh, somehow, some, one thing is your personal experience and what you see around you. But this is, doesn't make statistics, but on a global level, then you see that there is an impact and that there is there is a problem. And you, as a scientist, I like data, so I like, uh, yes. yes, I think it's really the next, the first steps to... The scientific method itself shows that, that there is something there and that we have to investigate and we cannot simply say everything is fine based on our own experience. Okay, well, thank you very much, Ariana. Thanks to you. Interesting was... to talk about this. Um, and, and hopefully, we will move to a better future. Uh, so, thank you very much, Ariana.